December 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 11 from the Old Testament. The Lord abhors dishonest scales, but an accurate weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the unfaithful destroys them. Wealth does not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from mortal danger. The righteousness of the blameless will make straight their way, but the wicked person will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the faithless will be captured by their own desires. When a wicked person dies, his expectation perishes and the hope of his strength perishes. The righteous person is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked turns up in his stead. With his speech the godless person destroys his neighbor, but by knowledge the righteous will be delivered. When the righteous do well, the city rejoices. When the wicked perish, there is joy. A city is exalted by the blessing provided from the upright, but it is destroyed by the counsel of the wicked. The one who denounces his neighbor lacks wisdom, but the one who has discernment keeps silent. The one who goes about slandering others reveals secrets, but the one who is trustworthy conceals a matter. When there is no guidance, a nation falls, but there is success in the abundance of counselors. The one who puts up security for a stranger will surely have trouble, but whoever avoids shaking hands will be secure. A generous woman gains honor, and ruthless men seize wealth. A kind person benefits himself, but a cruel person brings himself trouble. The wicked person earns deceitful wages, but the one who sows righteousness reaps a genuine reward. True righteousness leads to life, but the one who pursues evil pursues it to his own death. The Lord abhors those who are perverse in heart, but those who are blameless in their ways are his delight. Be assured that the evil person will certainly be punished, but the descendants of the righteous will not suffer unjust judgment. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who rejects discretion. What the righteous desire leads only to good, but what the wicked hope for leads to wrath. One person is generous and yet grows more wealthy, but another withholds more than he should and comes to poverty. A generous person will be enriched, and the one who provides water for others will himself be satisfied. People will curse the one who withholds grain, but they will praise the one who sells it. The one who diligently seeks good seeks favor, but the one who searches for evil, it will come to him. The one who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. The one who troubles his family will inherit nothing, and the fool will be a servant to the wise person. The fruit of the righteous is like a tree producing life, and the one who wins souls is wise. If the righteous are recompensed on earth, how much more the wicked sinner! God, having been on the internet for an incredible amount of time, since before it was called the internet, um, slander is such a huge part of participating online. You're either the slanderer or you're on the receiving end, or maybe sometimes both. Uh, I have had my fair share of people attack me, and it's such a weird phenomenon online that people hide behind their computers and get away with saying stuff that they would never say, in, well, most of them would never say in person. It's astounding. So how appropriate that Proverbs 11 talks a lot about the speech of various types of people and when to use it, how to use it, and what to do if it's used inappropriately, how to respond to it. Verse 9 says, With his speech the godless person destroys his neighbor, but by knowledge the righteous will be delivered. I was in the public eye for a very long time, as you know God, <laughs> and had a very very visible job where i traveled with handlers people asked for my autograph all this like crazy life before you and because of it because i was very much out in the public there were astounding things said about me online things that weren't true in the slightest but uh, people would say them and then other people would believe them and 
it was crazy. And I remember one of the first big times this happened to me of kind of sliding down a wall and just sobbing because I couldn't believe somebody would think that of me. Um, it's since gotten better. People still slander me, but uh, I've put it in perspective of an understanding it only matters what you think about me, God, not what other people think of me, uh, especially when it's not true. If it's true, then I probably need to adjust what I'm doing, right? Chances are you sent that person <laughs> to slander me to get me back on track. So understanding how hurtful speech is, uh, even as a child, uh, I dealt with that. Um, at home, I dealt with it at school, I even dealt with it at church. Uh, and things said in the wrong tone, the wrong way, uh, about the wrong thing, uh, can stay with people forever. Uh, I remember things from when I was six years old that still bring a little bit of pain to my heart. Words are very, very powerful. I think emotionally, emotional abuse is uh, a lot of times worse off than physical abuse. I'm not condoning either one. I'm just saying, I think sometimes those scars stick around a lot longer. Um, I've also seen the repercussions of what happens later on. If people buy into what people are saying about them, if, if that slander starts to get hold of that person's heart, it can really sidetrack marriage, it can sidetrack a business, it can sidetrack ministries. It's amazing. It's also <laughs> how incredible and encouraging word can completely change that. Verse 9 talks about knowledge the righteous, but by knowledge the righteous will be delivered. Understanding that how we deal with slander, how we respond to slander, uh, will deliver us from the slander. So I have a situation that's been going on for like six months that I'm not the person they're trying to attack, uh, but I'm getting a lot of uh, friendly fire. <laughs> and they keep writing to me, emailing me, calling me, uh, Facebooking me, and I have to keep blocking them every place they try and contact me uh, because they want to gossip about this person with me. Uh, and I told them straight up the first time and only time I talked to them, no, I, I'm not going to gossip. What you guys are doing is wrong, like all the right things, and yet they still persist. So I have never once continued that conversation, whether it be online or in person uh, with those people. And amazingly, it took a while, but amazingly they're gone. I haven't received anything in the last couple months. Uh, they're still causing problems for other people, unfortunately. So knowing how to handle it, to not escalate it, to not jump in and say the wrong thing or to jump in in the heat of the moment, I think those are all things that we need to come to you like everything else in our life and pray about. Um, how do you want me to handle this? It's interesting, a little bit further down, you start to talk about um, a gold ring and a pig snout is a beautiful woman who rejects discretion. Uh, talking about righteousness and wickedness and, and understanding the two. And what amazes me is I have a friend who used to slander people. <laughs> and she now has had a, a change of heart. She wants to go in a new direction, but people are still holding her accountable, holding her responsible for the person she used to be. Things that come out of her mouth, she has a hard time getting people to believe her because of what she used to do and what she used to be like. Now, all of us deserve uh, another chance. You are a God of a million second chances. Um, but that discernment and discretion is, or lack thereof, is following her into her new life. And it's causing her a lot of problems. My favorite proverb, Proverb 31, actually addresses some of those things about women and discretion and discernment. But we'll get to that in, in a few days <laughs> or a few weeks. God, today I just, I pray for everyone out there who is slandering, who is making little jabs and comments and things that they would not say in person to the other person that, that they're making those jabs at. I pray for the people who are out and out being vindictive and going after people and intentionally being abusive. God, I pray for all those people because I can't even imagine how much pain must be in their heart that they think that this, this is okay, that they think having these types of conversations and posting these types of things is okay. And, and it truly breaks my heart because I grew up having a couple people who were bullies towards me and I know how it affected me back then uh, and I know it affects adults as well 
God, I just pray for their hearts, that they would come to understand in a, in a mirror sense of what they're doing and how incredibly wrong it is. God, whatever's going wrong in their heart right now, can you just, if it's your will, come into their heart and, and help them work on those things? Help them understand that the only way, the true way, the pure way is only you. There is only one way. And with you, hopefully their wisdom will kick in and the slandering will go away. And the reaction to slandering will hopefully be held to a minimum or go away as well. God, we thank you for giving us this wisdom and discernment, this discretion to use the wisdom accordingly to what you've given us in the Bible. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.